Hi, folks. Check one, two. So it's 30 days since the October 25th, 2013 earthquake in Fukushima, 7.3, I should say, uh, 200 miles off the coastline, 200 kilometers off the coastline, that was rocked to skyscrapers in Tokyo, but didn't do any damage to Fukushima. It's a good thing, because we're all pretty worried about that happening. Let me kill this. That's me again, playing around with the guitar. I'll get it right at some point, but it doesn't hurt. And every night I put a song underneath it, and I personally go in and listen to that song five minutes before I go online. Because the only memories attached to that song is the memories I attach to it. It's an original song. And it's amazing how fast the last couple of minutes... Just give me a minute. That's a hot one. How the last couple of minutes before I come online it disappear. It's amazing. that I always try to do a countdown in my head for the last minute, and I can never seem to get it. Let me come on down. I see we got lots of people on the stream. It's really cool. Make sure everything looks good. Greetings, everybody. Starlight. Miss um, Milky the Clown sent me a story, and you can see that in the description. I'll bring it up, and it certainly raises a lot of good points. It occurred to me that the seagulls and the pigeons were dropping dirty bombs all over Tokyo and Japan. And what do you think of that one? How messed up is that thought? That every time the seagulls are pooping, that's actually a dirty bomb coming down on somebody's car or head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality, as Nuber Magic would say, this radioactive reality, dear folks. <laughs> it cracks me up. I said that to a few friends. They're still laughing, I bet you. It's, at, that's Gallo's laugh, obviously. Because every time they shoot a bullet off in Iraq and Afghanistan, there's a 50-50 chance it's a dirty bomb. Yeah. They shoot the seagulls at Sillafield, England, where there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into the ocean if they land. Because they'll be dropping radioactive or dirty bombs, you know? is a better way to call it. Is there any, what else could you call something like that anyway? Oh, you're welcome, Miss Milky, the clown. Thank you for the message, because... I thought that was such a great story. I got a hot cup of tea. I'll pull the speaker out. Hang on. Here we go. So, Tepco's got Tepco. It's got nothing to hide. Why did they prohibit the media from releasing aerial photos about the fuel removal of actor, actor four? I'm going to call it. I think that's a better name. Pool. It's supposed to be actor four pool, but actor is more like it. And they say it's for a security reason. It, can you actually wrap your mind around that one? Security? Do you think people are actually trying to break in there and steal stuff? Does it even matter? They just go out and stick a, a five gallon bucket in that Pacific Ocean and they got themselves a dirty bomb. They just go. <laughs> hey, God, I'll show you how. I'm not going to swear. I'm better than fucking doing that. Uh, so if they want a radioactive dirty bomb, uh oh, I don't know. They could probably go up there alongside of the fucking road and get one. Their Geiger counters for whatever particular thing they wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one got lots of it in the folks. Come on, come on, dear Alcoida Gravel. <laughs> Bag. We'll toss it in the truck. That's a dirty bomb. All you can do is drive around New York and just shovel it out of the back of the truck. You'll never be able to go to New York again. <laughs> Tepco prohibits media from releasing aerial photos, though, because <laughs> they're worried about the exact same thing. They're going to get their hands on a dirty bomb. Say, do you get any idea how stupid 
right? But that's the, that's, they got to give people something to talk about. They got to put something in the media. They got to give them something to regurgitate. Look, let me come down here for a second. So, because there's a bunch of pictures, you might get a little interference in your sound, so I'm going to stop in between each one. That thing there, that, that tossed, that was one of the explosions, and that tossed, uh, that's unit one and unit three, part part of the explosion you're seeing. You're not seeing the whole picture, obviously, uh, but you will in a few seconds. But that picture you're looking at is, uh, you can see there's a big detonation went off there, and they think they're hydrogen explosions, and they think number four was a nuclear detonation. It's different than a nuclear explosion. These have, see, they went around and dug up the topsoil. You remember me talking about how if you find contaminant, you got to go around and dig up all that topsoil for 900 feet, six inches of it. That's pretty well what they're doing there. They're digging up the whole bloody neighborhoods. Like I'm supposed to take the buildings too, see? Now that picture is, they're building a, a kind of sarcophagus over it. They're not trying to uh, repair that. They're just building that sarcophagus over it. And so inside of that sarcophagus, that's what it looks like. That hasn't changed. It's not going to ever. They're not going to go to work on that. But in there now, they got a sarcophagus on it. With the cranes over it, dipping down and getting the rods out. Don't fall for that one, folks. They are a disguise in the catch the fumes and vent them back up into the atmosphere. And to get it out of the public's mind, see? So these pictures are extraordinarily important because inside, inside, inside of that is like that. And they cannot do nothing about that. And you can see how it how big these pillars are. And it's everything in, in there, all those poles that were sitting on top of that are missing. They were turned into projectiles and they were blasted into all the surrounding area. And so there's just rods everywhere all over that area buried in the topsoil. And that's why they got the water, perpetual water pouring down on that. That's why they got the river runs underneath it and soaks up into the topsoil itself. Um, but the TEPCO needs to protect their security group because they don't want people to see the homeless in there dragging their gimp legs and, the, you know, or the dead bodies everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Because lots of dead bodies in there. They just can't show you that, folks. There's spots in there, just no man's land for a billion years. There's dead bodies in that mess you're looking at right now that they're never going to get to because you can't, that are just skeletons, obviously. Poor souls that have been sacrificed to go in there and do things, like the Fukushima 50. And I'm going to leave that. You can, so you can see the, how much damage that is. Let's leave that picture up. I'll come over to the comment section here. Irene Roll, Irene Lynn La Love it. Good evening, Dana and friends. How about that? You got the hardest name ever. Not really. I get a lot. Hi, Sylvia. Matt, mate, form, Mitoli. Well, good day, everyone. 6 a.m. over there on the other side of the Atlantic, is it? Hi, Albert. News eye. Uh, let me say hi to a few people. Miss Milky, of course. Third watch. Hi, Rad Chick. We got Rad Chick here again tonight, folks. The lady who does not stop. She's a machine. This is Christina Consolo. And she's a well known researcher, but I can't look at her picture very much because. After I listen to her, and there's a link below to one of hers, I end up 
If you were to walk in my house after listening to that, I think the best way to explain it would be you would find all the lights on with me curled up in the corner clutching a flashlight and sucking on my thumb going, this is not happening, this is not happening, this is not happening, this is not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening. And I don't know what to do with, because you can't get that out of your mind after the truth. And I wouldn't want it to go to my mind, but it'll shake the daylights out of you. And that uh, is the reality that we we can't face, most of us, that we don't understand the, the implications of it. And so every night we're here, tossing it back and forth, making sure everybody gets an equal opportunity if they wish, to understand that there's something different about this. This is not a nuclear explosion. It's not those types of isotopes. This is not banana radiation, okay? <laughs> Whoever says that to you has no concept of what they're talking about. This is weaponized isotopes. It's not just the cesium-137 or the eight-day life of the iodine. It's the billion-year life of the uranium, the strontium, the plutonium, the 1300 weaponized isotopes. That you're not being told about. And that's why people like um, Christina Consolo is is out again tonight, making sure everybody gets that little tiny bit of extra information for sure. Right? It's it's an incredible thing that when you get people that are so dedicated, they do not stop. They can't stop. They're incapable of stopping. Then you have to look a little deeper of why those people are dedicated. Uh, it's because they have no option. It's not a calling. It's not because they don't have no options. And if the world would just react the way it should have and could have, um, we wouldn't have quite so many worries, but we would still have the worries. And we wouldn't have some comfort in knowing that we tried instead of we built a shed over it and try to hide it, is what we accomplished, see? This is all we're doing inside of those sheds, those those uh, Kevlar, um, and that's all it is, it's just a big thing, they lift up with the crane and it gets in there, and it's just a lock and load type system. It's so deadly, folks, that they can't get in and change anything inside of it. They're just billing it over to capture it and get it out of the people's, out of sight, out of mind. So it looks really pretty like that, don't it? Eh? Go back to sleep and shut up. Just remember inside of it. It's the absolute definition of hell on earth. The very, the very epitome of what we couldn't even imagine hell on earth was. We now see it in front of us as a just a single entity capable of wiping out all life on this planet just in that one building it used to be in that one building it's, a lot of that's aerosoled down in the center of that building if you go down about 100 feet is 9000 degree fahrenheit temperatures known as the cores and 9000 degree fahrenheit cement is not going to hold it okay water underneath it for 100 foot in the topsoil We'll slow it down for a couple of weeks at best. Not even that, probably. We're talking about 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, folks. There is nothing on this planet outside of a nuclear, out of control nuclear reaction. Not a nuclear reaction, but another control nuclear reaction that can create that kind of temperatures. If you look at all the textbooks, it's the one thing you're not supposed to do ever under any circumstances on a planet with life on it is have that happen and we have three and they were built on a fault line they were built with a defective plan where scientists actually quit rather than build it rather than have their and protested it but it still when they hadn't built it knowing general electrics knowing exactly what was going to happen in the future on a fault line where there's thousands of earthquakes a year begging just begging please please they even took down certain heights of the walls for the tsunamis, just begging, please, come in and destroy this planet. Come on. Come on, big wave. 
Come on, little earthquakes. You're coming. We know you are. Hurry up. Just in case they dropped away the little tsunami walls. That probably could have stopped that tsunami from getting in there and flooding that entire site. Do you get that part, folks? And TEPCO is worried. Someone's going to get pictures of it, so they built a shelter over it. Now they don't want people to fly around. Put a plane and take pictures. Because they're doing a the fuel removal inside of buildings. And they don't want to see the security route. Do you think anybody anybody can make it in there and edit there around all the spots where you can't go because you'll drop dead? If you go this way or that way, if you're trying to sneak around, James Bond, go and get a few pocketfuls of uh, of uh, rods, bring it out. Yeah, any idea how stupid that one is? If I had a piece of rod the size of this right here, couldn't finish the sentence, and then every to be a string of bodies around my neighborhood all of a sudden. So toxic, it's, it's inconceivable. It's like uh, building four or building three that's missing. Probably the core is missing and all that mox fuel inside of one of those things is, is, is creatures that look like this. And they had poles on the top of it, folks. And that mox fuel is so deadly, it's a million times worse than Chernobyl. A million times worse than Chernobyl. And, and But Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown. And they controlled it. These are complete meltdowns. And the cores are missing, period. And then they have recorded temperatures of 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So every time you have an earthquake, shit in there falls down into the pits inside of those buildings. Believe it or not, there's like a laser with the 9,000 degree Fahrenheit has caught a hole up and down and so rods fall down and they get aerosol blown all around the atmosphere everywhere else and that's uh, the aerosols and the best way to think about that is that you can't see it you can't hear it you can't smell it uh, you can't pick it up because you can't find it. You need 1,300 Geiger counters that are calibrated to all the different types of uh, radioactive material, the isotopes themselves. And you need to know what that is, and you got to find a company that can actually calibrate those particular isotopes. And a lot of these are so weaponized and so secretive isotopes. And it's probably another thousand, actually, when you look, that we don't even understand. And so any... Any radiation, like you see here in America, it's 1,200 becquels a second. Disintegration is okay in your food for 2.2 kilograms or something. That's like uh, that's like taking, uh, say, 10 of the fastest drummers and they're, they're doing 12 beats a second each on their drums. 12 beats a second. Imagine... <laughs> 12 beats a second, keep that sustained till the end of time, our times anyway, and imagine the 10 drummers doing that, what that would sound like. Well, that's, that, that's acceptable in your food. So you know radiation is there when you increase the radiation in your foods and in your other things, right? Because their lawyers are saying, hey, we got to do this or we're going to be liable or we're going to have to deal with it. And if you raise it up legally, then the corporations can murder more and more and more. And even if they get caught killing people, they can't go to jail because they have corporate rights. And so they get a fine. So they take the money from their offshore accounts where they're not paying taxes. They put all their money out there because they got human rights. And then they pay off the fine. But no one goes to jail. No one gets a criminal record. No one gets called out. No one gets slammed about it. And then a year later, it's going to be increased to 2400 per kilogram year after that it'll be 5400 if you're lucky and still alive you didn't swallow some of this stuff and they say cancers take 30 or 40 years you know that's we're talking about contaminated cancer from the 65,000 unregulated chemical unregulated chemicals we're not talking about something inside of your body beating away at 1200 disintegrations a second destroying all the cells in your body creating these tumors these cysts these leukemias 
and just these health effects from being you know the high enough counts will start melting your organs and once again see a rad chick down there you know if I was to, to go right down that row most people wouldn't be able to listen to anything else I say period uh, because you need you need to get it in context that like she does in the video below where to keep it in context where I can be back and forth it could really mess with you thinking about it so it's better to get it in context so you can understand how serious it is and why people have to raise their voices all the time why do people um, need to know because they have a right to know and a corporation has no right to kill the entire planet and not give people an option to deal with it and then all we can do is sit here and talk about it is because nobody else will tell the truth out there so we're forced to come out and educate people to the point where they can handle it on their own end and they're empowered that way because as the truth comes out and there's a lot of them out there want to tell the truth but they get so many lies shoved down their throats and so when you research the stuff we talk about uh, it's more fruitful. It adds up, to, right? That's what I mean. So there's so many, to so many angles. See, and you got to keep you distracted. Uh, and the best way to make you not worry, obviously, is not the normal pictures, and then make these fables up. They're going to build these self-contained units over these wreckages and somehow that's going to allow them to get into the pools and that everything will be fine. The employees are taken off the streets. They're the most vulnerable of society and they have no concept of what they're doing. They have Some of them have concepts, obviously, but they don't understand what you're hearing and what you know about the toxicity and that there is no health care for them after. They're not going to get no medals like the 600,000 soldiers that went into Chernobyl and got their five minutes a dose that lasted them a lifetime. And they all got medals, right? So always think about that part too, of course. And that we don't see... The, the entire community wants to come in, but we don't see them getting in there. Everyone, everybody out there says that every time they offer, the Japanese says, Oh, thank you so much! But no, you cannot come here actually. Ha! Huh? We will listen to what you got to say, but you can't you can't come in there. Tipco. And then we've seen this PR campaign about building four that we don't even believe exist anymore. There is no proof of that. We almost got proof because but they prohibited the aerial photos. Cause there's so many people out there watching that everything now is important. But they, they closed up the internet, and that's why I started this video off, how they closed up the internet 30 days ago on October 25th when they had a 7.3 massive earthquake straight off of Fukushima that rocked buildings in Tokyo. And you know, if you look on the map, you'll see Tokyo is a long way away. And so we're worried more of these rods you see there, because these buildings are covered in rods. Each time that they had each time that they had a detonation that blew rods all over that neighborhood and into those buildings these buildings are all alongside of each other and under my video last night there's an extra clip i put in there where rad chick uh, had a 10 second clip about i was trying to explain how when you got 60 rods in a bundle and that whacks into a building then the rods each of the rods are packed of these small what known as pellets of strontium and plutonium, lots of uranium combination mixtures, concoctions from hell that should never be on this planet. And it's all about creating these uh, exotic weaponized isotopes. It's always been like that, see? They figured out the nuclear power a long, long time ago. And so none of these weaponized isotopes have any benefit. They'll say, oh, they're good for finding cancers and giving you cancer, or... Uh, Treating cancers, which is the biggest lie ever conceivable, folks. It's the biggest lie on the planet. D DCA actually cures cancer. You can get it at your health food stores. It actually reduced all tumors, lungs, liver, breasts, pituitary glands, all the cancers uh, 
by 70% in three weeks for pennies. And there's no patent on it. And it's been used in all kinds of exotic, uh, unusual, uh, degenerative diseases on people. And there was no side effects. So it was like a, they used them for an experiment, like, you know, like uh, hamsters, whatever. But it, it, it's, it is sold in the mineral stores because it's completely benign, right? But it, when it comes to health effect, it's, it's remarkable. Just the, just the cancer properties, the fact that it can destroy cancer so effectively with no side effects. Where chemotherapy is like 30 times to 1,000 times worse because it excites the cancer cells. It actually turns the cancer cells into, uh, uh, and creates new cancer cells and turns them into super cancer cells, see? And so your body will flood your body with the white blood cells and the, and, um, the fight that. And that, and that also... Um, displaces all the oxygen molecules in your blood. Every time there's a white blood cell created, it's, it's displacing oxygen molecules. And you need that in your body, big time, of course. Because once your body gets down to a certain level of uh, oxygen molecules, then you'll go unconscious, right? Because the brain will shut down to preserve the lung, the brain, and the heart. That's why you go unconscious, even in a boxing ring is because your body has made that determination where you got hit so many times and and so they're all in shock and so it'll shut down everything to preserve the bron the lungs that's what the, the, literally the reason you pass it when you're drinking is because you displaced all these oxygen molecules and if you stop drinking you'll start to feel better because you're getting oxygen molecules in your body i know about that because of my commercial diving as a diver you know, deeper you went, the less oxygen molecules you were able to get into your body. And you needed that. So your your muscles, we would sit in the hyperbaric chambers. And, uh, of course, you can't even read a book because of the static electricity from all that oxygen. You can blow these things up. So people outside the glass would hold books up for us to read. As bizarre as that sounds, it's actually very true. The tenders would do that for me. Um... And so we started this off tonight. I'm going to come over to the comments section because I went a lot longer than I was expecting that time. But Tepco is worried and he wouldn't release the air photos and the official excuse. And you'll find a link below. By the way, Fukushima Diary is a wonderful site. And very angry at the media, make no mistake about it, and with good reason. And that's why they exist, is because the media has turned their stomach, literally. They they just, it's, they hate them with a passion now because they won't tell the truth. They won't give people an opportunity to deal with this normally, properly, and ethically, and more, you know. The more we look at it, the more it's, the reality is that the, these people, uh, these this is the one of the biggest war, the biggest crime against humanity and uh, animal species I, I guess I can't call it that. It's annihilation against the human race and the human species. And the only thing that's going to survive in the future will be whatever adapted to the radiation. That's the bitter reality. This kills all species. This is a global killer. This is You can't put this genie ever back in a bottle. It just can't be done. It's in the tropospheres and all your mountains. The ocean will be completely radiated. If it's not already, it's already radiated, I should say, because of all the thousand miles of clouds picking it up, and depositing it all over the Pacific Ocean, all over the continents and uh, up to the troposphere and all this stuff that comes up out of those holes is getting up. It's aerosoled right down to the molecular, just below, you know, smaller than the nano, 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 nanoparticle. And... It was based, like, the, the, the model for the ocean contamination was only based upon two weeks dispersion coming out of there. But then 900 days later, we find out there was a minimum of 300 to 400 tons. But as I went down the rabbit hole, of course, I started finding out how much it takes to cool these things down and, and why they're back, how they're able to get back on these sites if these things had went supernova and how the hell did they get back on the site. So as I started to flush all that out, I realized it, uh, the mountain water was flushing 
them out into the Pacific Ocean. And that you could, on a small numbers, it's uh, 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the cores. Otherwise, you couldn't get on the site. It would go supernova, and the site would turn into a big sinkhole. A big sinkhole. Because rocks melt at 2,000 degrees, it's 9,000 degree Fahrenheit down there. So that means there's water there. Lots of it, too. Because otherwise it'll overheat with steam and the whole site will just boil. So there has to be enough water and it has to be moving water. If the water the stagnates there, that's why they can't really physically block it off. Even though it was a good cover story, it was just another bullshit story. Just like putting the, you know, the sarcophaguses over it that are made of Kevlar. Inside of that, it looks like that. Right? Inside of that, you can see the panels, they just lifted up, and they slip right into place. You don't have to get up there or nothing. It just slips right into it. And you know how it still hangs on a coat hanger? It's no different than that, really. But look, look. See, nobody can get in there and chop wires with a welding torch. Or you see all kinds of pictures of people in there with welding torches chopping it. Well, look at us, we're at work. You don't see no pictures of that. You see this stuff. <laughs> if you do see a pe person in a picture, it's photoshopped. Because those buildings got whacked with hundreds of thousands of tons of plutonium, strontium, cesium, uranium. I don't give uranium the credit it deserves. And the different family and the different family trees of each one of that. And then the concoctions made out of that that I don't even know what they are. No one knows what the hell it is. Their weapon always hid away. And they don't want other militaries to know what they're doing, see? Oh, they, the, the Americans made this isotope, and then the Russians got to make that isotope. And then, but it's even worse than that, because they're all making their own concoctions. Japan was captured a long time ago after Hiroshima. That was the end of Japan's solventry, solventry right there. And then they let the thugs get into the kusus yeah, and take over. And they're so violent against the government, the government couldn't get pieces of it back, because that was a cash cow. But now they got uh, 140 contractors working on this site, and they're going out and Shanghaiing people to bring them in and do jobs that shouldn't be done by any human or animal or living thing on this planet. That's and so that has to change now, not later, not not tomorrow, but right now. I'll settle for tomorrow, but right now it has to change. See. And we have to take all the universities institutions on this planet and they have to focus their energy to 4,200 peer review academic studies that are published, not counting ones that are not published, but the ones that are published every day, the thousand page with a thousand man hours on it of your loved ones, university students paid for by your tax money, put to work on solving how you're going to keep the species alive on this planet for an extra 50 years. And then we'll worry about the 50 years after that. But the, the big push right now is how do we keep the species alive, some of the species on this planet alive, before they go extinct. Because as this thing comes out, make no mistake about it, with a big enough earthquake, where it's going to be diabolically dire. What could happen to us? If there's another major earthquake down there and a tsunami gets back in there and tips over all those tanks and causes all... Because they're all just duct taped together with rubber, plastic, PVC pipes, for goodness sakes. Because what else are you supposed to do? It's a nightmare. And at the bottom of each of these tanks is all this strontium, this plutonium, the uranium. And if the tanks go dry, they're going to go into their own nuclear uh, fission. But putting salt water on it, you're creating these nanoparticles that... Be, that are structurally turned into a little nuclear reactors on, on a nano scale because of the sulfur in the salt water. It does something really, really scary and that you can't even deal with that one, let alone the 1300 isotopes that you need 1300 Geiger counters to find and you need people trained how to do that. You need a small army and a massive budget just in your little tiny community to make sure you're not destroyed in there already. If you're on the coastlines of the Pacific Basin, no one's going to tell you how dangerous it is. To me, that's the, that's the most frightening thing on the planet, is that even our own system is not going to tell us, the people 
here in British Columbia, Canada, how friggin' dangerous this creature is that's blowing across the Pacific in three days and that is coming up our coastline will be here in a month or two. And there will be no oxygen behind that. There will be no life, no, no microscopic life can live. And I'll tell you something about the ocean. You can take a drop out of the ocean, used to be ever, uh, anyway. In the old days, you used to be able to take a drop out of the ocean and you put it on a glass. You know, your professor's in a 10 years time or that, and you'll put that little thing in a glass to be millions of lives. Creatures in that, now it's just, everybody's just got their yearly dose of radiation because I was stupid enough to put that drop on a glass. And there's isotopes all over the room all of a sudden. But what I'm trying to say to you, the ocean was a soup, was a soup, a soup. The littlest drop of anywhere in the ocean, there was a million lives in it. And so the radiation cooks those little tiny creatures. And a lot of that was the stuff that made the oxygen. And when it would hit the coastline, and even the clouds would liberate those oxygen molecules. And then we got people like Al Gore out there trying to steal the CO2 on top of that. They're setting the stage, you know. They're setting the stage for something really bad. But they can take all that CO2 now and put it in their greenhouses. That's what a typical farmer does anyway. But you're not allowed to do it. No, you got to give it to the government. They're going to lock it up. And you come out in somewhere. <laughs> for their greenhouses. Where they're waiting to build a spaceship to get off the planet. And so our legacy, besides the fact we try to keep the species alive for another 50 years, I'll settle for 25, is we stop them from getting off this planet. Ultimately, as this we realize this has all gotten to shit, we got to make sure they never get off this planet. They've been locking up 4,200 academic journals every day so that we can't come up with ideas to get off the planet ourselves for solving any of the problems. They're feeding you 65,000 chemicals a day that's uh, since the EPA was um, opened a shingle, hung a shingle in 1981. Well, it was created in 79, but hung a shingle in 1981. And he grandfathered in every chemical known to man. And um, probably half of them were known to be carcinogenic, by the way. 2,200 of them today can be used to make food. According to them, the lobbyists who created the laws, uh, you can take those 2200 chemicals, mix them up, and that's actually considered, you can sell that as food. And it is, it's in all kinds of corner stores right now. Every corner store is full of it, these concoctions. You know, um, if you've got craft in your cupboard, you need to go dig it all out. Don't eat it, no matter how good it is for you, you think it is, how tasty it is, how sweet it is, and everything else. Dig it up, get it out of your house right now. And don't give it to somebody. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, go take your grease from your pan and pour it all over it in your garbage bag to make sure nobody reaches in and grabs it at the dump. Because uh, craft is the worst thing on the planet, period. It's GMO. And GMO has, all craft is, and no GMO, or GMO has no nutrients in it whatsoever, folks. Nothing. It's engineered out. We read the peer review studies on that. It's engineered out, and the engineered in toxins that will give you cancer like the glossophates and the formaldehyde, which are known carcinogens. But because we've lived a good life and watched Hollywood movies all of our life and lived on the TV land and just done the things we wanted to do and never participated in the system itself to hold it accountable, it's so out of control now that you have to realize that in the future, if you keep eating GMO, you make yourself more vulnerable, more not only more vulnerable, but you become toxic yourself because you change the DNA structure of your body physically because you eat the GMO. That actually physically happens to you. And you do that to your children too, of course. And uh, if your child has autism and stuff like that, there's lots and lots of studies and lots of people have shown that if you get them off the GMO, you'll see them actually go back into school and become a functional student again. That's been repeated over and over. And once again, a lot of these uh, are showing up more and more and more and more and more because kids are growing up and you are you had grown up eating the GMOs and conceived a child because of the GMOs. But the fact that if you got all the nutrients and minerals back into the child's body, they can actually repair uh, not 
replace, but repair a lot of the damages and become functionally uh, independently. And that includes Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's victims. We've seen a great increase in that for turmeric and coconut oil. Just one application to them because it's such a rich minerals. But also the dandelion root tea where you have every nutrition and every mineral going into the body has really changed a lot of people's lives um, many times over. And uh, I don't know how I went down that road. I guess I was off on a rant. I tried to cover the TEPCO thing, but I beat him up enough, I guess. And the building and the pictures you're looking at, you don't see any workers there with their welding, you know, cutting, tying things up. You don't see the scaffold connection, steeplejack, and they're building scaffolds anywhere. No. You see them uh, putting... Hang on. Sorry. You see these big, beautiful buildings. Look at that, folks. Wonder bars. Look at all the trees. How wonderful. <laughs> Underneath it, it looks like that. And it'll always look like that. And no one's going to get in there with a hacksaw. No one's going to get in there with a chainsaw. No one's going to get in there with anything. you got to build robots in the future to go in and deal with that. You can't do that. And so say they're going to have a crane over it and it's going to some magically now go in there. Because if you lift it up, you're going to have all these gases coming off. If you were to go in there with a grapple and just reach down and grab it and lift it, first off, it's 9,000 9, degrees Fahrenheit you stand at the bottom of that. It's 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom of that. And so all the stuff that falls down is going to atomize and everybody around is going to drop dead. And they're probably, that's why they don't want the aerial photos because of all the dead bodies. Hi, sweetie. You're getting up for a bit. Yeah, Dan is winding down now. I'm going to come back over to the comments. Zoe. You're looking at me. I knew her magic 2012. Where do we find uncontaminated food? <laughs> everything is everything is radiated, yes. Yeah. Water, food, air, each other. I'm just saying if you want half a chance, you still gotta get the nutrients in your body. You just can't give up because everything is radiated. You gotta go pick food that actually got nutrients in it too. Yeah, it's radiated, you can't get away from it. You ain't got no options. Option is to get up on a cliff and everybody start jumping off it or trying to do the best you can in the worst case scenario imaginable. See? That's the reality that you gotta uh, that I always try to put out there is you got no option. You can't just stop eating. And you can't eat GMO because that makes it worse. There is no nutrients in it. it. And there's more toxins in it. And you can't escape it. And so you've got to hope they come up with a solution. And if we can take the 4,200 academic journals that are produced every day and get them to work on it, we might find some alternative ways of doing it. Uh, but we need 1,300 Geiger counters, right, to look for the food. Hi, right, Chick. Yeah, the kombucha. I gotta, I gotta get links for that too, and put underneath my video for people how to. And then the iodine, you can get consumable iodines that helps flush it out of you. And I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but it's frightening that you gotta do stuff like that, isn't it? It's frightening that you gotta think that you gotta do stuff like that. And it's, but it is true that you gotta do these things if you want to be able to have some kind of edge, or you can just everybody get up on a cliff and start jumping. So what's the option again? It's certainly not going to be just to say to hell with it and start eating GMO because it doesn't matter anymore because you're just going to make yourself worse. But uh, what the radiation does, yeah. See, uh, getting the isotopes, ingesting the isotopes and then eating radiated food is two different things. And so the kombucha is for uh, the radiation that you breathe in. And, we, and let's face it, we all got radiation in us already uh, from space uh, nuclear weapons that they, they blew up in the upper atmosphere. Those types of isotopes are different than the types of isotopes that are coming out of Fukushima, but just as deadly. But once again, it's a whole different family tree of isotopes that are created through the explosion than compared to the molten cores. And because we don't, we only have uh, Chernobyl and Three Mile Island, but they were nothing compared to Reactor Three at Fukushima. 
Uh, in fact, uh, Fukushima in a single day released more radiation than the entire span of Chernobyl. Uh, just one day by Fukushima. Crazy. And then the wheat. Uh, yeah, there's lots of wheat. There's another problem with wheat besides GMO. It's the protein. 29,000 proteins. And they do some weird shit to your body. They're probably the worst, most insidious thing on the planet now is wheat. And that's proliferating out in everybody's uh, food. Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Hang on, folks. Let me go up. See what happens. 44 minutes. We'll start winding her down. I'll come down and say hi to people. And we just came out for... Because that was so absurd that TEPCO doesn't want a plane shot. Because they don't want people looking at the dead bodies in the field there. All over the place. Of the victims they hijacked off the streets. Eva Marie Simpson. Hi. Yeah, well, get it checked. You got to catch up in these conversations after Radchick is talking about his restaurant wouldn't change suppliers. I'm not sure if I can find the rest of it. But that definitely got my interest. Aloha Vera, it'll bury, and I still haven't got those videos finished. The other ones just takes up all my time. Unfortunately, I am catching up though. Oh, she was, uh, Radchick was saying they had a friend she has a friend who quit being a chef, a chef, chef, a chef because he hated serving food to kids. That was GMO. Wow. Good for him, eh? Wow. So cool to see. Oh, I almost got Nuburu Magic's 2012 comic, but I'll get it after, I guess. Gets knocked down. How convenient for Oh Santo, Monsanto, yeah. Uh, gas during the wars. Yeah, we can go to a long litany of more radiation on this planet. And so it's coming, like Nubaru Magic says, it's just, you just, how the hell are you going to get away from it, Dana, right? And like I say, and I should remember to say that same sentence so that people understand that part too. Because I do say it a lot of the times, but a lot of people, a lot of times I'll forget, because I mention it repeatedly a lot of times, is that you can't escape the radiation, right? How are you going to get away from the radiation? You're going to dig a tunnel. How do you know that you're going to get away from it? How are you going to get it out of the water when it's going through all the troposphere and getting deposited around the planet? And has been. And a lot of these tumors are going to show up. But like I say, DCA can reduce the tumor, but you still got the radiation inside of you beating away. How do you get away from that one? The kombucha. There are ways to flush some of it out. And so all of it, if you know about it, at least you get the chance to, to try. See? And that's all you can hope for. Uh, you know, when it comes to that side. But if we had 4,200 peer review academic studies working at this every day, we'd come up with all kinds of solutions. But who knows if we can actually come up with solutions to deal with the concoctions that are coming out of that place. How are you going to get rid of the Pacific Ocean? What are you going to do with that? What about all the life that is missing from the Pacific Ocean right away, see? And what about the die-off of the Pacific Ocean itself? And what about all the super... Cyclones and tornadoes, 100 and 200 and 500 mile wide, and two and three and four and 500 mile speeds that are going to be coming to us because of the radiated ocean. Because that's just heat. That's heat. Global warming is real. It's called a Pacific radiated ocean, period. And that's going to heat up this entire planet over time. Because radiation doesn't stop giving out energy, it's the purest form of energy possible. And, I mean, there's a lot of theoretical things you can talk about when you're talking about a full Pacific Ocean. When you're talking about another tsunami coming in and whacking Tep TEPCO's uh, weaponized military-industrial complex, Fukushima's prefecture, all those tanks, all that hideous, heavy, you know, all these reactors now, all of a sudden, you can never get back in there. Everything gets out of control, five and six. We don't even know, see? We just don't know the, and so the international community can't get the chance, and they're going to wait till it's too late again. Just like they waited with the bad design and put it on an earthquake fault, knowing this would happen. They're just going to wait for something else to happen and say, well, can't do nothing. 
At that point, everybody needs to drop a nuclear weapon on Japan, just knock them right off the friggin' planet right away, just blow the whole bloody thing up. And Nuber Magic, right? Detox, 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 and never stop. That's what you give everybody for their birthdays, detox kips, kits from now on. And Ratrick says we have to learn how to live with it in our environment, right? Hi, Quitty4. Hi, moment, nothing sure. Post Glacier Rebound. I like that one. Uh, that was Nubu Magic again. Uh, Andrea Adrian Sylvie. Sorry, my comment got limited. Bastards! They limit my buddy's comment. Hi, checks and balance. Hi, Grey Rose. Tint. Where's George Clooney's <laughs> recon satellite? That's hilarious. Hi, Carly. I have some funny stuff there last night, folks. Thank you. That was hilarious. I was reading it again this morning with a friend of mine. <laughs> it's just. There's some really smart people out here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, Miss Scott. Not to mention the Ring of Fire has 10 major volcanoes that are active at the same time, right? And when they stopped bomb testing, Radchick says, the sea life recovered in abundance. Well, wow. it's, but it's a different isotope, unfortunately. And fertility rates skyrocket. It can be fixed if we can if it can be stopped. Yeah, that's what I say anyway. It's just that Mox fuel. It's the fact that it's been going on so long, and it can be fixed if we put our mind to it. If we, you know, if we had all the institutions on this planet, give it uh, give it the urgency that it deserves and the respect that it deserves if we treated it as a meteorite and everybody can see it nobody can hide away from that thing and then the entire planet would be packing their kids lunches to get them off to college to help stop this this event level extinction from happening that's what, that's what the Hollywood tells us we're supposed to do right that's what Hollywood always said. The species will come together and we'll deal with it. Just like Radchick said, if we're given that opportunity. And so we need to just name the very next meteorite Fukushima. Maybe as well call the video tomorrow night. I was going to call this video tonight uh, Fukushima seagulls dropping dirty bombs. Major threat. Uh, but that's going to be happening everywhere at some point, isn't it? Certainly on a Pacific coastline, if the seagull's lucky enough, they don't get wrecked, no cancer, from sitting in the radiated. There's so much radiation, though, going into that ocean. This is what frightens me, is it creates these super tornadoes and these, that 100-mile eyes, like the Philippines, had a 100-mile eye. The biggest thing on the planet we've ever seen, we have ever witnessed. We didn't even think we would live to see anything like that. We have a history of that, something like... Um, four billion years ago or something that happened apparently but never in the history of mankind have we seen an f4 with a hundred mile oil i a 100 mile one burping as i'm talking 100 mile wide eye see a typical f4 would have maybe at best a half a mile wide that would be incredibly destructive so i mean besides the fact that the Philippines really doesn't exist anymore, you know, that's the real story today, again, for me, is the Philippines doesn't even exist, folks. You know, go look at Google Map and go look at the Philippines again, recently, and you'll see what I mean. Philippines actually doesn't exist. It's been destroyed. And these people have been inundated with radiated water with a 50-foot... In some places where we're seeing those big boats go in there, do they have a 50 foot, they need 50 foot of water underneath them, see? So that was a 50 foot water went in that, those communities. But say even 10 miles of water, the entire radio, uh, radioactive ocean, I shouldn't say that, I guess, uh, the, the Pacific Ocean that is radiated, and that, most of it is because of the thousands of miles of clouds dragging all the cesium, the plutonium, the strontium, the uranium all over the place every single day depositing it it's not like 
because a lot of people think of the peer review study shows it takes six years for those currents to make them way all the way around the Pacific Ocean with that two week dispersal model, not the 990 day dispersal model. But yeah, who knows? Do you think it can be stopped? Well, yes, I do. If we were to take all universities, institutions, and treat it as the meteorite, we can change things. We can't stop it, but I mean, we can change things. That's what we're, we're all, when we say stop it, that's what we're really talking about. We can't actually uh, change what's ha all this stuff that's went up in the troposphere and the stratosphere. Because they've been testing it for so long, they've been dumping it into the ocean for so long. There's 8 million liters a day pouring in the, the cellar field, but not from a melted cores. Not from three melted cores. Those creatures are mad. That stuff is mad, see? It's madness. That's the madness of this. Yeah, Sellafield is insane. Uh, you know, Hanford with 2 billion uh, dumped right into the ground. 41 miles of open uh, pits of yellow cake. You know, every day I think about the insects and the birds and everything in that area, how they become mutated and all the biodiversity habitat of 41 miles of open pits. 2 billion gallons. And then the hundreds of thousands of 45 gallon drums that have been thrown over the side of ships. Not counting the 45,000 right off San Francisco. Not counting the hundreds of thousands off the Russian coastline. Not counting the fact that every nuclear plant on this planet that's on the ocean it puts all their waste right directly into the ocean if they can get away with it. And they do. Who's going to hold them to account? I've seen the documentaries on this stuff. Um, and so they've been pawning this out there. But these are different types of isotopes than what we are talking about right today. But they're still just as scary, just as frightening, just as deadly, just as hideous, just as wicked. That they shouldn't exist. They, there is no reason for them existing. There is no logical reason to have them on the planet, period. See? These are about weapons. This is about idiots, morons. These are about cowards and monsters that have just won't leave it alone and pushed for this day to happen because they are hateful evil people that can't have it take it with them and so they're gonna take it with them yeah okay right check i will so we'll put that underneath uh after for sure yeah it's they got to keep the law alive about more nuclear power plants I'll catch that after, Ratchik. Uh, is that a short video? I better not do it on that computer because I might lose my stream. I've heard of the secret weapon factory below Fuki as well as, see, another one talking about. Uh, I'm just trying to catch up on some of the comments there. Do you believe the plant was blown up by the bomb? Don't know, not that it matters right now doesn't matter because it's happening at this moment we need to deal with that and then as that gets exposed everybody else will go looking at all of that stuff is all I'm saying right depleted uranium rounds right dull ram depleted uranium low-level radioactive material and somehow they got rid of that last part of the acronym and called it DU but DU is yellow cake and once again for anybody that's joining us not familiar with that a Dixie cup of yellow cake, if you put it in a restaurant, it'll kill everybody in that restaurant in an hour, or an office, or at a party, or in your lunchroom, or wherever. It will kill everybody there in one hour, even if they just walked in and walked out of that yellow cake, that they make these depleted uranium. They're not tipped. They're not just the bullets, the, the, all the weapon, uh, depleted uranium weapons. It's not tipped. It's not coated with uranium. It's solid. Uranians, um, and it's hell on earth. It's uh, it's illegal, totally illegal. Uh, everything the A10 Warthog uses is a DU round. In fact, the A10 Warthog, it releases the atomosity equivalent radiation of about 70 Hiroshima bombs per minute. It shoots about a ton and a half a minute. And a ton and a half of depleted uranium, a ton and a half in the bullets, is the equivalent of about 
I'm not sure if it was 51 Nagasaki bombs or 70. I think it was 70. It was more closer to the number. It was underestimating it then. And so the A-10 Warhawk, when you see that going in, shooting these 12-inch 50 caliber depleted uranium rounds, it shoots a ton and a half a minute, folks. And that's the equivalent of the animosity. Because these catches fire pyroplastic as they're going through the air and they off-gas all these particulates all over the environment so you when you shoot these in other people's countries you contaminate the land the water their homes the schools the you know every building in iraq and afghanistan needs to be dug up and taken to a nuclear waste site same as palestine uh every building there should be dug up and take it and so when the people live in that environment they go in after and they dust off all the stuff they're getting they're breathing in they're re they're liberating those isotopes from that and reactivating a lot of it. But I mean, just uh, even if it was no isotopes and it was just the pieces left over, they're just pounding off the isotopes, the gammas, the betas, the alphas. And so they're just toxic environment, right? And that's why 80% of all babies in Fallujah, for instance, are deformed. No eyes, no nose, no hairs, no mouth, no nothing. And that's why they're supposed to be locked up in sarcophaguses for a million years till somebody in a million years can work out how to deal with it. And that's why when we say the ocean is a nightmare, it's because everything in the ocean needs to be locked up in sarcophagus till the end of time. See? Uh, and so what we need to do is we need an educated and informed population. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it for sure after. No, I like that stuff. I love that kind of stuff. Radchick, thank you. Uh, I really liked that little video with the pellets last night. It took me a while to catch it. Just at the end of the video, I kind of caught it. But after, I was showing friends of mine today about that to help them explain it because there's 60 rods together and each rod is full of all of these pellets. So that, that uh, and the link is under my last video, folks, to what uh, Radchick was talking about. So that little 10 second clip, it shows all these pellets. But think about the 60 rods and each one of those rods are all pellets. And that's why that 10 second clip is so appropriate. Because it shows how each one of those little pellets, if I had one of those pellets, one, one, in a restaurant, it'll kill everyone in a restaurant for a billion years, particularly if it was like uranium stuff or plutonium stuff. But even uh, what we consider, consider, there's no safe level of radiation anyway. Yeah, even we get the government to admit this, they are still corrupt at every level. Much needs to be done. And address maybe all the army generals that got for it will step up. <laughs> maybe that's what was going on. Who knows? <coughs> that's a that's a smart little comment, there, kiddo. Who oh, makes me suck my thumb because she scares me sometimes, but we're very grateful. She finds the time once in a while to show up on our threads and help us and put her weight behind it. And that's her link. You'll find links on her, my site to Nubra Magic 2012 to uh, Miss Milky the Clown, which is an incredibly good site. And then Miss Milky the Clown 1, which is her present site. And she keeps finding everything on Fukushima. Rad Chick, actually, she runs uh, Nuke Radio. She's out on the mainstream media all the time. She's writing articles all the time. She has Mutation Watch. She has many degrees and a unbelievable fountain of uh, goodness when you go there and the personality to go with it. And relentlessly, Miss Milky the Clown is the same way. And you have, let me see, you have other people like Thomas Ackerman. You have people like Kevin. Blanche, who's been at this for long, forever. You have a uh, link below to Susan. You have, uh, which is before it's news, and she has lots of good articles there. So if you start scanning through that, you'll find lots more stuff and has supported us many, many times, including that video yesterday, by the way, folks. She, she made sure she got that one out for us because it was a good video. And we were all on the ball. It was, I thought even after it was such a good little show, so I was, I was happy to see that this morning. I guessed it anyway when I seen the numbers. That's probably what happened. But then we got E and E News, and they aggregate all the stories from around the world. It's not a hard job because not many people talk about it. 
but uh, they are on the ball and they uh, link up to all the other stories that are pertinent on the same page and then it'll link you over to the videos the original artists the original authors and they're not going to be carrying people like me they're carrying all the mainstream media folks like the Times, cnn or anybody that speaks out or even uh, tries to cover it up it, it'll still show up on that page and so that's important part of everybody's equation and then you got to support the real people that are out there and putting themselves in the media all the time like Radchick in particular and Lorraine, Lorraine uh, Moray, uh, you'll find a link to that video below. And I know I make fun sometimes, but I just want you to understand that it's such a. I don't know how many times I've watched it now, and it's just dull. I just, it's never. I, I learn so much every time. It's like, how do I miss? How did I miss that the last time? How do I miss? How is that even possible? It's just because there's so much. See? And you have to wrap your mind around it. You have to learn that. See? You have to know that stuff. In order to understand the big picture and that's why i keep every day i end up in the corner sucking on my thumb trying to it was like i dropped my weight belt around 300 times on the ocean floor because of sea lions because i couldn't control my fear but i always suited it back up went down looked for my weight belt because <laughs> they're expensive and went back to work because the fear dissipates a little bit if you give it a bit of time and the fear to me is different see because i understand what they're saying and uh, it, it really means something to me and that's why it does that to me and that's why I have to keep going back because when things do that to me I always go back you know I always I always got back in that ocean no matter how scared it made me no matter how many friends I lost I always went back and I lost so many friends to the ocean um, Victor used to if he had a bottle of booze he would pour it out the window one for his buddies and uh, he was an ex-Navy SEAL. And he ended up getting all these joints replaced, like $4 million worth of surgeries, because of the deep diving with the Navy, uh, the Canadian Navy. Just the bones are full of bubbles, like an arrow bar. That's what my bones are like. Um, I don't know why I brought that up. I guess it's the end of the night. Sometimes you do that. I think of it with my friends many times. And sometimes I might share that. Yeah, Carl, Red Chick's awesome. Hi, Eva. Miss Mugly Clown. I'm winding her down. Bubble. Bubba. Hey, Bubba. What's up, Bubba? You know, I'm going to stay in there for a second. If you have not seen a Fukushima nuclear meltdown, it could happen to you. Yeah? Hour and five minutes? Oh, that's too much. Okay. So I'll wind it right down right quick. I'll say hi to everybody before it goes off. Go down. Hi T, Callus, Carl again, Iranian. I can't pronounce your name. You know what I'm talking about. Michelle, what? Adrian, Albert, Nuber Magic. His buddy cheers. Miss uh, Milky the Clown again. Eva, make sure I get anybody extra. We got just got Bubble, Bubba. I call you Bubble again. Okay, looks good. I know I'm forgetting all kinds of people. Hi, Jacko. News Eye. Let me see if I can get any extra names. Get a few shot. Uh, camshaft. Hi. Moments. Nothing more. Hi. Uh, doing pretty good tonight. I'm actually getting a few names in. I'll spend another minute to know for a color tonight. I was kind of hoping to be gone for an hour. No more. But it's hard to do that. And it doesn't really matter. The moment is now. And tomorrow is coming quick enough. We'll be back tomorrow on day 31. And I'll catch that video where I check out there. Hi, Cheryl, Wallace. Hi, Sylvia. Checks and balances. Uh, Eva again. I'm probably missing a few people, so not much I can do about it. And. Nuber Magic, Nick, what? We love what you're doing, buddy. You're awesome. You've been at it so long. Um, just very appreciate it. Just like Miss Milky, just like Radchick, just like all the other people, Tom Sackerman, Kevin Blanche. Um, no one gonna forget Susan, uh, E and E News, all of my staples that I try to keep up with. 
are very important to me, right? That's my family, the way I see it. And, you know, that's how I see people that I'm more as my family. That's how I treat them in my own mind. I think of them as family. And so, in the way that I, I you know, I, I, I'm interested in what they got to say. I'm interested in what you folks got to say. I'm out watching, reading constantly everything, everything. I can find everywhere. And then I just go look for the older stuff and wait for a few hours and some more will show up and I'll keep reading. So I'm like, I'm keeping up with it. And then the comments section really keeps me uh, honest all the time, which is cool, see? That's the most important thing anybody could ever do. I'll end the video on that is find flaws in things I say, right? And point that out and make me stronger. That's the best thing you could ever do for me, ever. So care. And we'll see you tomorrow night, folks. Mark her down. Take it to the bank.